It's all about humanity. Did you know? School Sport Victoria offers 650,000 sporting opportunities in 31 different sports. At 10,700 events across the state every single year. That's a lot of kids playing sport. And for over 25 years, the Victorian School Sports Awards have recognised more than 1,500 students, teachers and volunteers for excellence and outstanding contribution to school sport. Now that's a champion effort. All right, we made it to the Ask SSB show and I'm joined by the very lovely, young and handsome Brendan Smith. How are you, mate? I'm good, thanks. That's good. Thank I know you for having me. You know, that's all right, mate. We love having you on the show and you're... Fro you're uh, Tuning in from the other side of the world, you're over at near Italy there, and we've got a jam-packed show today. We've got about six or seven students that want to join, and we've got a whole bunch of questions that are already coming in, so we're going to get to it. But, you know, I think everyone's uh, questions are, are rolling in, and they're rolling around the fact that you are a bronze medalist at an Olympic Games. How does it feel to even hear that statement? Yeah, it's pretty surreal, to be honest. I think... You know, the, the last year that I've had, or the last two years now, really, have been such, it's been such a rocky journey, you know, filled with yeah. highs and lows, having to swim in the ocean when I couldn't, I had to spend two months out of the pool, you know, when all the other people that I was racing at the Olympics were able to roll through with uh, minor, minor adjustments to their program. So I think uh, for me to come away with the bronze medal has been, yeah, really incredible. Well, I'd imagine, look, I, I want to just spend a little bit of time bragging about you because you've you've been to the Tokyo Olympics. We call them the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but they were held in 2021. Got a bronze medal. You've also got an Australian record, which for the, you know, for the men's 400 individual medley at 409.27, which is fantastic. You're also two-time winner of the Victorian Rob Woodhouse Award, which is, the you know, awarded to the highest ranked FINA fina ranked medley swimmer how does it feel to have that many achievements at such a young age yeah you know i think that when i was really a young swimmer up until the age of 
15, 16, I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really too good at swimming, to be honest with you. So, so to have all of this happen in such a short amount of time has been, um, it's been a bit of a blur, to be honest. It feels like not too long ago, I was just um, swimming, swimming in the, the local psychic group with my mates, just having a good time. And then all this has happened out of, out of just doing the sport that I love. So I'm really, really thankful and grateful for everything that's happened. That's good. You're such a humble dude. Now you've come through the Team Vic swimming pathway. So you represented Team Vic on a few occasions and wore the, wore the uh, Team Vic uniform. You've also spent time overseas and competed overseas in different clubs and different meets. Is there a, a meet or a Team Vic experience that stands out for you in, in terms of your memory? Does, do you, does your memory go back to anything that, that happened during your Team Vic years? I think that... I think my first team, the Team Vic, was 2015, mm -hmm. the Pacific School Games. Yeah. I remember that was a really awesome experience. That was easily the biggest competition I'd done at the time. Um, and I was really, I was really honoured to be a part of that team. And then I think it was 2016. I didn't stay with the team in 2015, but I did in 2016 when it was in Darwin. And that was just a regular uh, national school championships. I remember I I did do well at, at that competition. I did a bit better. Um, and I remember spending time in that team environment, staying with the team. That was also a really cool thing to experience. And then obviously 2017, again, it was Pacific School Games. And that was probably uh, the best meet that I'd had up until that point where I won. I think I won the overall for male uh, medal medal count so I was yeah really really happy with that meet also so the three times that I that I got to to do those meets were all really special to me I mean it's what's really you know amazing is that in 2015 it wasn't that really is not that long ago when we think about it we're not talking about many many years ago so you've or you started on this international trajectory quite late but it wasn't that long ago and you're already you know you already got a medal at olympic games which is in many's opinion one of the highest medals you can get in terms of swimming that's uh pretty amazing that you've hit it so hard so quickly what would you attribute your where did it all start for you how, how did you get into the pool where did it all begin um so how i started swimming was obviously through my parents wanting to have me in the water to learn how to swim safely. And obviously my, my two oldest sisters, they were already competing in a very high level. They were, they were also really good swimmers. Um, so I think having them to look up to and also my parents who were also swimmers and did life saving as well. So I think that's definitely how I started. Um, and I think when I wanted to take swimming more seriously than what I was at the time was probably 2016 when Nutter Wadding appointed Scott Talbot as the new high performance coach. And he definitely took a lot of interest in, in me and developing me as a swimmer and also a person. So I think he he definitely started making me what I am today, really. Um, yeah. And I, I do attribute a lot of a lot of my success to him. And then obviously also Wayne Laws in the past year, he's, he's stepped into that high performance role um, because unfortunately Scott had to step away and, um, and, and move elsewhere. So I also have to thank Wayne Laws a lot for, for what he did to me in the last year to get me to where I am as well. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Look, I'm suitably distracted because I'm getting emails, text messages, and the chats come in as well. Look, kids are wanting to know from, from you so many questions, and we've got some guests that are sitting backstage and they're ready to come on and we'll bring them on in a second. But this is what Jessica Hale has asked. How many years have you been a swimmer? So, you know, I guess we could take it back to not just competitive swimming, but 
just how many years have you enjoyed swimming? Um, yeah, first of all, thank you very much, Jessica, for the question. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly can't remember when I first got in the water. I know my parents had me in the water before I could walk, just getting to know to be safe around the water because obviously that's a big thing and that's, I think that's a huge reason why everyone swims really because you want to be safe around water. It's an awesome thing to be around and, but it can also be quite dangerous if you, if you don't know how to swim. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely had me in the water before I could even walk, probably swimming normal sessions. I'm not sure. Maybe the first competition I ever remember doing was seven to 10. So I would have been probably seven years old when I started training, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, that's, it's quite a long time ago now. <laughs> it, it certainly is. But, you know, I, I recognize I'm speaking to a um, bronze medalist, but how important is just having fun in sport? I know there's competitive side and you are very competitive and you do really well in comp competition. But I guess for those listening that may not make an Olympics and may not make an elite sport, make swimming an elite sport, how important is just having fun in, in the water or having fun in sport? Um, well, I'm also, I'm a very big believer in, in, in doing things that you really enjoy, yeah. um, no matter what that is, you know, if you're, if you're being active, anything, anything is, is better than nothing. So, so do, do what you do, what, what makes you comfortable and, you know, what makes you happy. And I know for swimming, I found that, that that really makes me happy and I know I really enjoy doing it. I still enjoy it to this day. You know, um, I'm always having a great time with my training partners and getting to travel and, and do all these things. So, you know, just follow your dreams and, and uh, make the most of it because you don't know when, you know, your last time in competitive swimming might be or, or whatever you're doing. Um, so really, really cherish every moment you get. Good on you. That's such good advice. Now, we've got um, a couple of, like I said, a couple of people backstage. Just before we get to Arizona's question in a second, um, we've we've had some more come in um, just on the chat, in the chat, and I've, I've seriously got an inbox full of emails. I, I Anyway, um, tell us what is, this is a great question, I think, coming from uh, Ebony Cummings. Who is your idol? If you had to pick an idol, it doesn't have to be a swimmer, but who's your idol? Um, I think that definitely my idol growing up would it would be obviously Ian Thorpe. Um, yeah. You know, he's he's a great in Australian swimming and I think that the things that himself and obviously all the other Australian team and what they did in 2000, 2004, definitely fueled the fire in every athlete that is competing and was competing at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics and beyond. So I think that having some role models like, like Ian Thorpe and, and all those others definitely fuels a, the next generation and helps them to be just as good, if not better as, as their predecessors. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. We're going we're gonna to get to more of these questions in a second. Thanks for that question. For, uh, for everyone who's sending in a question, we're going to get to them in a second. I've got Arizona who's on the line. I'm going to bring Arizona on. Arizona, how are you? Oh, you've got your region championship hoodie on. Well done. Thank you. Now, what do you love about what, – what sport do you love? Let's tell us what sport. Um, I love swimming and netball and dancing. Mostly nice. Swimming. Swimming, netball, and dancing. Have you ever tried netball and dancing, Brendan? No, I haven't. Um, okay. I find netball is really hard. I used to play basketball when I was a little kid, <laughs> and when you when you grab the ball, yeah, and you have to stop it. Just I can't do the hand-eye coordination. <laughs> there you go. So Arizona, you've got some questions. If you had, you know, ask your questions. Go ahead. I have two. My first one is, how did you keep motivated? with your swimming sure that's um that's a really good question so i think i think to keep me motivated especially the days when i don't really feel like getting up in the morning and training i always remember why i do it 
you know, because if you lose track of why you do it, um, I think that's you've you've lost track you've lost track of 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 why you have to get up in the morning. So I think remembering why you do it and what you're doing it for and who you're doing it for is a really big thing that I always look back on when I'm when I'm struggling for motivation and you know you can't you can't swim forever so you have to make the most of the opportunity and the time that you have that you can do it i think good answer i have <laughs> before you move on before you move on Arizona, we've got another question from you but brennan just talk us through just a teeny bit more on because I, I think arizona's question is valid how did you stay motivated let's add the other part that she didn't add that i think is important to talk about is Last year we had COVID and, and the, the pools were locked up. You couldn't get, you know, you can't fill your bath with water and just train. So how did you stay motivated wondering whether the Olympics was going to go ahead or not before we get to Arizona's next question? Yeah, I think that uh, there were two main things. One of them was, you know, if I'm not, if I'm not still getting in and putting in the hard work, I know someone else will be. And I knew that, uh, if someone else had had made the team ahead of me that I that I thought that I could have been in there ahead of because I wasn't putting in the work during COVID when when they would have been I think that wouldn't have sat very well with me. Um, so I, I was definitely, you know, if if I don't put in the hard work, I know someone else will be, and and I'll miss out on that opportunity. So so I had to I had to grind it out, put in that hard work. And the other one is, you know, if you're not ready for the games, it's better to be ready for an Olympics and then not go ahead rather than not yeah. being ready for the Olympics and having them go ahead and you're not ready. So yeah, those are the two main things. Arizona, how was that answer? Was that okay? That's good. Yeah, good. Excellent. Okay, next question for Brendan. Well, my second question is, did you meet any of your idols at the Olympics? Oh, nice. If so, what was it like? Yeah, so I think the two main thing the two main people that I watched growing up more more so as someone who would was then trying to make an Olympic team or to try and make the Australian Dolphins team was back in 2016. I remember I was supposed to be at school the whole two weeks, but I was actually really ill during the Olympics. So I had my bed and I was just bedridden the whole two weeks, but I was able to watch the Olympics wow. and to watch Kyle Chalmers and Matt Horton win, you know, their gold medals in the 100 and 400 freestyle was, was a huge thing for me. So to be able to to, to be on the team with them this time around was was awesome. And I was actually in the same apartment block as Kyle and watching him go about his business is really inspiring. And yeah, I hope, I hope to, be, to be a swimmer as good as him one day. Thank you. That's a great, you've asked some great questions at Arizona. Thanks Heath for joining us today. You come all the way from Cranbourne South Primary School, nearly as far as Brendan is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. No worries. See ya. Bye. It's always lovely to meet your idols. And um, I, I hadn't thought about the fact that you'd be mixing it with some of these people that you've seen on the screen so often. And we've had a question come in, which is, you know, and a pretty important question, especially for a boy. What did you eat at the food hall at the Olympic Village? What what food was on offer for you? That came from That's come from Jarvis over Vimeo. Nice. Um, I think before I, I was racing, to be honest with you, I was trying to, I was so nervous before, <laughs> before I started racing when I was in the village, I was just trying to keep my, my steps down and not walking too much because if you, if you wanted to go and do everything at the village, you would be walking upwards of 15 kilometers a day, to be honest with you. So I was trying to keep my walking and my, the damage that I was putting on my legs to a minimum. So when I went to the food hall, um, I was probably having big meals because I wasn't going there just for a very little light snack. And we were able to do light snacks and even breakfast in the Australian building or apartment block. 
so that was that was really good to have that there but when i got to the food hall i was mainly having a lot of rice i tried to stay clear of things that i wouldn't have at home too much because the last thing you want is to have your body react to something that you've had new you know three or two days out from the most important race of your life so it was mainly just a lot of a lot of meats uh rice pasta a little bit of pizza but a lot of i pretty much just had pizza and chips when i finished racing to be honest with you just a lot of pizza and chips <laughs> nice yeah. nice and we, we're going to get to jesse in a second who's going to come on in a second but um this is what jessica hale has asked what stroke are you worst at and what's your favorite stroke so give us your favorite stroke and your worst stroke one that you definitely will not be going to the olympics with uh breaststroke but it was funny <laughs> because when i was a young kid yeah. i was always a breaststroker because um well my older sister michaela and the race, they were both breaststrokers. Um, and Michaela still is, she, she, her main event is breaststroke. So I was a breaststroker growing up and then I switched to butterfly and then to freestyle and then into IM. And I only switched into IM in 2018, mid 2018. So I've only been doing medley since, since then properly. But yeah, I'd, I'd say my, my least favourite stroke is, is breaststroke. My favourite stroke is freestyle. Um, and it probably shows in my eye and I went, uh, I dropped back a fair bit in the field in breaststroke and then came all the way from eight to to third in the freestyle. <laughs> well, very good, very good. We're going to bring on, uh, we've got Jesse coming on now. Jesse is also from Cranbourne South Primary School. How are you, Jesse? Good. And they you're wearing your state hoodie top two, mate. Well done. Nice. Now, um, what sport do you love, Jesse? Uh, I love swimming and cricket. Nice. Now, are you just saying swimming because Brendan's on here or you really like swimming? I'm uh, really good at swimming. Good job. What's your favourite part of swimming? Uh, probably freestyle. Excellent. What's your question for Brendan? Um, my question for you, Brendan, is why did you pick the individual medley over just racing in one stroke? Awesome question. Um, I think back in 2018, I said I was, I was mainly training for freestyle and I was training for 1500 freestyle. And I think that was mainly because Scott saw or he thought that there, there was an opportunity in the 1500 for me to make a senior team. And then I was, I did, I dropped a lot of time in 400 IM and also 400 freestyle. So back in 2018, I would say that internationally, my rankings were quite similar in the, in both of the 400s. And the reason I picked the 400 IM was I felt I had a lot more room to improve because there's a lot more going on in a, in a 400 IM than, than what there is in a 400 freestyle. And also my Australian ranking in the 400 freestyle was was quite low. Considering how how well it was internationally, it was still really low in, in Australia because of how good Australia is at 400 freestyle. Whereas my medley was ranked quite high for how it is internationally. So I, I decided to really focus on that 400 iron because there was a gap in the Australian team. So. I could have not an easier way onto the team, but a way that I felt would be more achievable in a shorter amount of time. That was a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> it so. certainly was. Now, just before Jesse goes, have you ever run, Brendan, have you ever run 400 metres? I have, but it's probably not, much, not that much faster than what I swim at. Well, I mean... I've heard, because I'm not a swimmer myself, but I've heard swimming is much harder than running. So doing a 400 running is not as um, strenuous as swimming 400. Is that right? I'm not sure. I think <laughs> well, for me, for me, honestly, it's it hurts. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. Running running's not, not too good for me. I'm not that good of a runner. 
<laughs> now, just before you go, Jesse, we're going to fast forward 10 years from now. Where are we going to see your name up in lights, mate? Are we going to see you somewhere famous playing cricket, swimming yeah. at the Olympics? Hopefully swimming in the Olympics. Good job. Well, you keep enjoying sport until then, buddy. Great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Always good to have these great athletes up, uh, little athletes up there. Now, we've got some other questions that have come in. Alexandra's asked, what inspired you to become a swimmer? I think you kind of touched on this before, but what inspired you to become a swimmer? She asked that on Vimeo. Um, well, it was always something that I really enjoyed doing and, you know, I sort of made the realisation that if, if I could do this beyond the age of, well, sort of 18 really, that I could, I could maybe make, uh, make, make something out of it and, you know, get to travel internationally, meet new people, uh, do something that I really enjoy. So I think it was a bit of a, bit of an easy decision for me to, to sort of make that next step. I don't think there was really any one time that I thought, oh, you know, I want to do this, this and this. It was just the next step, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds yeah. pretty logical now. who did you, We've also had this question come in. Who did you room with and did you take your Olympic gear home with you? Yeah, so I roomed with Seabom Lee. He was the other 400 I am Mm -hmm. um, but then we we're in an apartment with, there were seven of us in an apartment. So yeah, you had your own room or room with one other person. And then there were seven of us in one apartment. Mm -hmm. And with my team gear, I have this shirt and nice. I have one other Australian shirt and that's it. I, I only have the one bag with me and I had to send home two really big bags full of gear <laughs> back, back home. I think yeah. I, I think I sent three. I sent one before I even left the games. Yeah. Because we got some gear when we were back in Australia. So I've sent back three suitcases. And then now that I'm here at ISL, I already have one full bag. And I think with the team gear we'll be getting here, I'll probably have another full bag. So yeah, that's five suitcases worth of gear. And I only left with one. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, I mean, the question on everyone's lips, have you got your medal with you? Is that is that handy? Have you got it next year? No, no going home. I, it, yeah, it went home. I went I went home with the certificate, the, the uh, everything. <laughs> all Good all job. of like the really, yeah, the really important stuff I just sent home with my coach Wayne Laws because unfortunately it's, probably not too safe for me to be traveling around with just get it home get it safe but in saying that um, I would like to make it very clear that when I come back and when restrictions allow it that I will come out to to anybody who wants to see the medal nice. or if you want to see me around at another wedding um, you know I'll, I'll have the medal with me and, and I'll make sure everyone gets to see it and touch it and get a photo with it uh, Good on you. As I think, you know, sharing sharing what I did and what the team at Nutterwadding did is really important to to have someone see that at a young age because I know that's what I had and that was a huge part of me wanting to, to do what I did. Yeah. Now, we're on the topic of the medal. I want to bring on Lara early. Lara comes to us from Cranbourne and South Primary as well, and she's got a question around the medal as well. Lara, thanks for joining us. Hi. Hello. And what, what's your favourite sport? Um, my favourite sport's basketball and running. Nice. nice. Now give us your question for Brendan. How did you feel and react when you qualified for the Olympic swimming team? Yeah, so I was obviously over the moon because I know that was a goal of mine for at least the last four years or five years leading up into the trial. So I was obviously really nervous, super relieved that I was able to make the team. And I didn't realise I'd broken the Australian record at the time until my teammate said that I did. So I was just really happy to have made the team. But to go that fast, I was not expecting to go that quick. Yeah. 
Now, talk us through that. You broke the Australian record, which got you into the Games, and then you went to the Games and you broke the record again. Yeah. So it was it was really um, – I knew heats were going to be fast as, and mm-hmm. I saw um, – a fellow competitor of mine, Lewis Clairbert, he's from New Zealand, and he actually broke his national record and the Commonwealth record in the heats before me. And then I, yeah, he only had it for that one race because then after that, I re-broke my shine record and took the Commonwealth record off him. Um, so that was, yeah, that was that was a big moment for me as well. That's great. Lara, where do you hope to take basketball one day? Um, in the Olympics. Really? You want to compete in the Olympics too? What's your favourite thing about basketball? Um, probably defending. Yep, great. And do you have an idol yourself? Do you have someone you look up to in sport? Um, no, not really. Good. Well, that's all right. You can You can just enjoy your sport and... You can be your own idol one day, hey? Yeah. Thanks, Heath, for joining us today, and we hope you can join us in the future. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Um, We've had this question come in too. Um, Let's talk through some of your pre-race rituals from Sammy J. What what are some of your pre-race rituals? What are the things you do that you need to do to get yourself prepped? Um, to be honest with you, I used to have a lot more than what I do. I found I used to try and, you know, eat all the same things and do all the same steps leading up to when I raced. And I found that I would be extra nervous or, or not feel right if I didn't do them. So I tried to steer clear of them so that if I didn't get to do them, it wouldn't be a big deal. But in saying that, I always try and wake up the same time before before I race, especially because it was a morning finals. That was something that I had to, sorry, adapt to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also just listening to the same, uh, to just listening to any music, really. I just, I'd listen to anything. I try and talk to people. I do the same warm up, obviously. I don't really do anything special behind the blocks that's the same and just slap a little bit, you know, look the pull down, know that you've done the work and, yeah, just go into autopilot basically. Which is pretty exciting. Now, talk us through the moment when you, you know, you're about to hit the blocks, obviously you were nervous, you raced, then you touched and you turn around and you realise you've got the bronze. What happened in that moment for you? What was going through your head? Yeah, so obviously I was, I didn't really know what to do because I just, I didn't know that it would ever happen and I didn't think it would ever happen. So the fact that it happened was insane. I just, I didn't, I didn't really know how to react. And then it wasn't until after, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds after finishing the race that I saw uh, my time was slower than what it was in the heats. So I think that was a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointing, but had I known that I would have gone, you know, the time that I did at an Olympic final, being in lane four, you know, even even three months ago, I would I would not have believed you. Know, I would have thought you were crazy. Because of what reason? What what would have caused you to think that people would be crazy to think you're going to get a medal? I think it was definitely looking at the competition going into into Tokyo. It was all everyone was was really red hot. My time, I think my uh, my world ranking was for all time in the four hundred I was about seventieth, and then I dropped almost five seconds at trials, and and I was ranked. You know, I think I was ranked eighth going into the game. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd, prom- I'd improved my ranking that much. And then to come out with a bronze, I, I didn't think I could do it. So, uh, yeah, I was just really happy that I was able to 
put together the perfect race and and get the job done <laughs> and you know what i reckon there's more to come brendan because i think you are only at the start of your uh sporting journey you, you're, you're young is one of your first olympics but definitely not going to be your last olympics so pretty exciting stuff uh, elizabeth runting has asked this question on facebook and it, i think it's a valid question do you do any other sports other than swimming from did you do any other sports other than swimming from a younger age that's come from georgia yeah so i did football <laughs> basketball uh i still i still do pool and surf life saving i haven't so much in the past year because of of COVID and everything and a lot of their events have been cancelled but i still yeah. do that and still plan to do that and then obviously swimming uh, i think that's the four sports that i did but i really enjoyed football and basketball because they were just super team oriented and so is swimming but it's it's fun to be on the playing field with with all your mates yeah and and look there is a part of swimming that's a team sport but realistically it's an individual sport and what you're talking about is just having the friendship in a in a team bonding experience which is pretty exciting how did school sport shape who you are today what what part did school sport play you went to yarra valley grammar is that right yep yeah. great school out there in warrandyke croydon ish area north ringwood sort of north yes. ringwood that's the one <laughs> um great school it's got some great staff out there how what part did they play and how did they champion you to to get where you are yeah i think that you know their their sport curriculum is is really good i think it really helped everyone not even not not just myself but everyone to be super active, you know, doing Saturday sport. I think those are probably, I wouldn't like to tell my teachers this, but those, those are my, my favorite memories <laughs> at school was, was being able to do sport with all your, with all your schoolmates and, and going through the wins and the losses with them is really awesome. Um, but in saying that, even when I was, you know, at school doing day-to-day -day classes, you know, everyone at Yarra Valley Grammar were, were second to none with with helping me manage my time in and out of the pool and what I was able to do and, and to get through all that. Even through year twelve I was I was training full time. You know, I think I missed four sessions for that whole year in two thousand eighteen wow. when I graduated. And three of them were because I was literally supposed to be in the pool when I was doing my end of year exams. So, yeah, um, yeah I dropped um, almost no sessions for that whole year and still able to, to get through year 12. I really, really attribute that to, to the whole team at Yarra Valley Grammar. Which is, you know, amazing that you can, you train so hard as we know with swimming, it's a very early morning sport um you're probably doing you're probably doing eight sessions a week so there's a you know a couple of days where you're doing sessions double sessions and then you're having a rest day as well uh, i guess we've had this question come in from william but <clears throat> from pakenham lakeside primary school but this actual question comes in quite often and has come in for you as well how many times did you have to practice to get to where you are today you, you couldn't quantify that but Take us through what a typical training week would look like for Brennan Smith. Yeah, so it's nine sessions, uh, wow. sometimes 10 sessions a week, swimming sessions that is. I think only one time I did 11 sessions, but yeah, that was that was a hard week. I only, you, you can't really do that very often, but typically nine to 10 sessions a week, uh, two to three gym sessions a week, and then I have physio once, maybe twice a week, depending on the kind of training I'm going through, if I'm going through a building phase or, or quality or something like that. And then obviously we do running, cycling once or twice a week as well. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty full on. There's a lot of hours of work. I mean, that sounds like full, that's pretty full on because obviously a session is, you know, between 90 minutes and two hours is it that that would be the time that you'd spend in the water 
or in, yeah, in so training? Yeah, usually, yeah, usually two hours, two hours, 15 sometimes. And then obviously we do, you know, 20, 20 to 30 minutes of activation before we get in the water and then stretching when we get yeah. out of the water. So um, it really is, if you're doing double sessions that, that day, it's, it's pretty much a whole day that you're just swimming. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, in a, in a sense, we, we, you know, we watch you get the medal and we watch you stand on the podium next to those two Americans and smile away, but we forget that to get there, you've had to put in literally hours and hours of hard work and heaps of energy to just get you to where you are today, which is pretty insane. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of work that goes into creating an Olympic medalist. And I think that it's not really seen too much. Obviously, you just see the, the end result, which is really cool to see. But I think that, yeah, it's... All the, all the hard work that goes in, in the background is definitely an underrated aspect of, of an athlete's life. Well, definitely. And, and we have had this question come in too from uh, Ding from St. James the Apostle. He says, what are the challenges you've had to face in becoming an Olympian? If, if there were some things that you thought, you know, I'd really have had to come overcome this, what would it be? I think... I don't want to say it was it was smooth sailing, but I think I was on a good trajectory all the way coming up through. And then when COVID hit, I was obviously yeah. struggling a lot for motivation. So I'd say that was my biggest hurdle to overcome. And obviously the the decision for my coach Scott Talbot also to leave. He left during COVID, so I think it was September. So we'd just come out of uh, out of our first or first lockdown and I think we we're going into our second lockdown and then and then he obviously moved to the UK and I think those two things happening at the same time definitely definitely was the the hardest point of my Olympic preparation for mm. me yeah because you build such a bond with your coach you, you know they they assume such a heavy role in your life that must have been yeah. very hard to and to to not only to remove yourself from that relationship, but then to try and start another one with another coach, that, that would have been a very tough time for you. Yeah, it, it was. It, I thought it was going to be harder than what it was. Um, I was very lucky that I'm still in contact with my old coach, Scott Talbot, yeah. and yeah. I was obviously lucky enough that the assistant coach, who's Wayne Laws, he was there since 2017 doing sessions with us. He just... Uh, it was more of a, a mentoring role. So they were really both running it um, in parallel up until when Scott left. So it was, I, I knew Wayne very well at that stage and I still keep in contact with Scott very well. So it's, um, it was, it was a lot more smooth than what I thought it would be. Yeah. Great work. Now, this is coming from Priscilla along the line of coaches. Who was your first coach and where did you train? First time ever. But you were a Queensland-born boy, right, originally? No, I was I was born in New South Wales. New South Wales, right. In Wollongong. So yep. I was there till I was six months old and then mm -hmm. I moved to where I'm at in Donvale. So I've been there for pretty much my whole life, growing up there, yep. still there. And I've been at Nutter Wadding my whole life, all the way from learn to swim to to now, and I'm still at Nutter right. Wadding. So it's really so your first coach was somewhere, somewhere, someone at Nutter Wadding. Some, someone was... at Nutter Wadding, I think. I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure. I know, <laughs> I know my grand, my, I know my grand coached me when I was like nice. six or five, um, because she was, she was a. Uh, swim teacher at Nutter Wadding for almost 40 years so yeah so she was there coaching me for a period of time but yeah I'm not sure who my first coach was I'm not yeah I don't know I'm sure so your many. grand profoundly profoundly proud of you as well which is um fantastic I guess 
if someone asked you what sacrifices have you had to make to to get where you are, what would you say to that question? I think it was definitely around around school and and catching up with mates. I would say it was it was really hard to, especially as going through year eleven and year twelve. Um, swimming was taking up so much time, and then every other little little bit of time that I had was taken up by school and I wasn't I wasn't able to do your typical year 11 year 12 school life basically it was um, yeah. really regimented and yeah not much not much time to do much else to be honest and that would be hard because I mean you appear to be you know one of the boys you you love your mates you obviously have a lot of friends male and female out there so that would have been tough to make those decisions i guess you're talking about not going to parties not drinking all that sort of stuff is that what you mean yeah yeah it was really um it is difficult and there are times where you just think oh you know maybe like maybe i can just put this on hold for a bit but i knew what i i knew what i wanted to do and when i can when i can really focus on one thing that i want to do there's not much that I like getting in my way of me doing that, which is a strength, but also, uh, it, you know, it goes both ways. If I if I get too focused in on one thing, it just uh, sometimes I can take it a bit too far. And I do that in training a bit where I'll, I'll go too hard in a session and it'll cost me for the rest of the week or, right. or something like that. So it's it's good that I'm able to focus on, on one thing and really – make the most of it but yeah it goes both ways which is great now i mean this question is coming in because friendship's really important to you did you make any friends from other countries while you're at the olympics uh not so much while i was at the olympics unfortunately because i wasn't able to to really interact too much with other countries it was it was definitely um more so within Australia, but in saying that, I did, I did get to talk to most of the people that were in that 400 IM final, and, and I'm close with them now. I was very close with Lewis Clairbert from 2020 when I did ISL, and I know a lot of a lot of my international friends through ISL, which is where I'm at now. Obviously, I'm going to compete at ISL on Saturday, and I think that'll be on TV for anyone who's who's keen on on watching some more swimming so yeah that'll be on for the next four or five weeks so there should be a lot of swimming to to be had but yeah i think i know a lot of people from overseas now through this mainly great work now what what are you looking forward to in the next you've got you you just talked about your comp that you got now and then you've probably got i think one more after that what's the next few months hold for you and then what you know fast forward five years what do you hope to achieve in that time yeah so moving forward for me i'm not sure when i'll be back home to be honest with you it it depends on on what's happening in victoria if if i'm able yeah. to train and and what that will look like yeah um obviously after an olympics a lot a lot changes i know uh, my coach Wayne Laws uh, has decided to retire, and that's obviously a decision that that he was always going to make. He he said when he took on the role a year ago that that it would only be for that one year. Um, so yeah, trying to trying to organise what I'm doing moving forward, and obviously what's happening in Victoria with lockdowns and everything. I think me being international is it's hard obviously because i left i left my home in may 26th of may was the last last night i spent at home so i've been on the road you know in and out of hotels since then i would i couldn't even tell you living out of a suitcase well exactly and living out of a suitcase and eating food that's you know I'm sure home cooked food is quite amazing. So and, and sleep is really important in recovery. So how how do you do that for so long? Um 
Well, to be honest with you, I didn't know how long it would be. So it was yeah. easy. It was easier not knowing how long it would be because yeah. I would just think, you know, it's just this next thing and then I might go home and then and then I made the team. So then I go to Tokyo and yeah. then I might come home and then I, I, I made the commitment to do ISL. And then depending on how far New York breakers make it will depend on how far or how long I will be away for. But it was funny because I only left because Melbourne was going into a lo another lockdown. So I had literally two hours to pack my bag that I've still got here. Um, everything, everything that I've taken from home was packed in two hours. Wow. And yeah, there are a few things that I wish I didn't take and a few things that I wish I did, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm, I'd imagine if you if you <laughs> that's a that's a pretty tough position to be the position to be put in to to make a decision on what you're going to you know carry with you in the lead up to your biggest event of the year in a couple of hours. But look, it'll be nice to uh, eventually get you home. Let's fast forward. I know you've got many years left of swimming, but where do you hope you'll be one day after swimming? What what's life at the end of swimming look like for you? To be honest with you, I'm I'm not too sure on that. I know I'm at university at La Trobe yeah. studying a Bachelor of Business. Nice. And where that takes me or if I choose to pursue that more than just a degree, well, time, time will tell. I know I definitely like being outside and doing hands-on stuff. So doing an apprenticeship, uh, maybe being a carpenter, I'm, I'm not too sure where where my life will go after I finish swimming. But at the moment, I'm really just soaking up everything, everything swimming and and being around that for the time being. Which is great. Now, to keep you in the sport, what's some wish list or, you know, what's a couple of things on your wish list that you would love to see regarding, is it sponsorship? Is it um, partnerships? Is it coaching? What, what sort of things is a wish list for you? Um, for me, you know, I it doesn't take too much for me for me to be happy with where I'm at. So I think yeah. just being yeah. around, you know, an amazing an amazing staff or group that that I know that I'm comfortable with moving forward for the next three years, and having everyone in the team know know the things that I want to do and and be on board with that and have me be comfortable with that, I think is a huge yeah. thing. Um, you know, I also really enjoy with working, working with like-minded people and like-minded companies. I know Funky Trunks, they've, they've been a huge sponsor for me. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to partnering up with, with other people and, and see where that leads and, and make new connections and, yeah, really, really get my name out there sort of thing. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to most for yeah. my time swimming in the next however long it will be. Yeah, because, I mean, there's a fine line, isn't there? There's the part that you love. You love competing for the country and wearing the green and gold. But then there's the other part. You've got to pay the bills too. So you need to have some form of income as well. So keeping that balance is, I'd imagine, as an elite sportsman is pretty hard because – you haven't got time in your schedule to go out and be spruiking for sponsors. You've got a training regime that's pretty tight and pretty high level. And, and you know, a question came in just before, how many hours sleep do you get? But sleep's really important in terms of recovery, right? So how many hours sleep would Brendan get a night? Um, I'd try to get at least eight hours. Yeah. Um, I probably haven't been hitting that at the moment, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um yeah, I think I think being away from home, it's it's harder because you're. I'm pretty picky with the bed that I sleep on. I'm lucky that the bed that I'm sleeping on at the moment and have been for the last three nights has been the best bed that I've slept on since <laughs> probably since I left. Not long after I left home, probably before trials. So yeah, I'm definitely happy about that. But um, yeah. 
It's well, been, I mean, you, it's, you can't take the bed with you when you compete, but it, it, we heard rumours, or not rumours, we heard stories of the Olympic beds being made of cardboard, but they were still really comfortable. But, you know, we, like I said before, we look at an athlete like yourself who hits the podium and gets the bronze, but we forget that you've had to do so much in terms of sleeping out of a suitcase, uh, sleeping on a bed that's uncomfortable, you know, living out of a suitcase. But Gary Barclay's come in and said, love your work, Brendan, you're an inspiration. Belinda Irvine said, you're an inspiration to all Nana swimmers, Brendan, happy my children uh, have such a wonderful role model and I can see that you're a, a, a shout, shout out to, to Gary Barclay. He was actually, yep. he would come in um, for some of our sessions and actually take me. So obviously because our group is very individualized, Wayne can't take all of the groups. So, so people would come in and I know Lee Nugent and Gary Barclay were the, the main two that were taking the, the distance crew or the distance part of, of our squad so yeah huge huge shout out to gary and also to to lee nugent for for taking me for those sessions and and the the other boys well that's uh that's great and i'm sure gary would have loved hearing that last question from us kathy Steele's coming in my 12 year old daughter wants to know what do you do when you don't want to train you get to that point and you're probably feeling like that over the next coming weeks but you get to a point where I don't want to train today. What do you do in that moment? Um, I definitely just take it one step at a time. I know yeah. for me, it's always the morning sessions that I want to train. So, you know, I just have to get out of bed, um, <laughs> get changed. Michaela always, my sister, she always drives me to training. So she does all the driving because she obviously trains in my squad as well. Right. So... Um, to have her is a huge, huge plus. I know that there are sessions that I may not have, may not have rocked up to, but knowing that that she's there and she's doing the same thing, I think that definitely makes it a lot easier for me. So you know, just get to training. I can sleep in the car ride because I'm not driving. Um, get there, and usually I just fall back on on the skills component of, yeah. of what I've got to do. Just if I can do six kicks off each wall and I'm, and I'm breathing every four, then that's one step closer to where I want to be. So if nothing else, I just do that. If I'm feeling awful in the water, just, just do that. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. We'll make sure that you follow this young man on Instagram. That's his Instagram handle right now. We've loved having you on the show, Brennan. And, I have a sneaky suspicion this is not the last time we're going to be crossing paths because I think your future is very bright. You're an incredible young man. You're very laid back and we love that about you. But you've got such a bright future in swimming, mate. We, we love, love talking to people about you. Thank you so much. I've, I've had an awesome time answering anyone's questions and, and uh, I'll probably be doing a, a Q&A in the next few weeks. So... Um, yeah, that, that'll be on my Instagram. So make sure if you, if you have any other questions, I'm sure there are other people with, with questions that we couldn't get to today. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be on there answering questions and obviously hopefully be doing this again um, in, in the near future or, or, or whenever. So, yeah. Brilliant stuff, you. brilliant stuff. We've got, yeah, like I said, my email's got uh, currently 33 more questions in the email alone that I haven't got to. Uh, and then we've got Vimeo, Facebook, and YouTube that we've um, gone on to. So the, the, we're getting lots of comments, which is nice. So you're a very much loved young man, that's for sure. So thanks, Heath, for joining us, mate. And we'll continue to champion Brendan Smith. And good luck in the ISL. Thank you so much. Pleasure. No worries.